few days ago, Oracle released an updated developer virtual machine image. And in this video, we'll take a look at just some of what's new. So here I am with my virtual box manager and I've downloaded the image. Links are in the description. Uh, just double clicking on that and accepting the defaults, which is the way to go. Free use terms and conditions. Well, let's agree to that. So it's, as we see, it's been imported now and it's powered off. Uh, but you see that we have a certain amount of uh, space allocated and so on. Again, we've gone with the defaults here. And we can do a normal start and see this get it initiated for the first time. We'll run through this quickly. The image contains a developer uh, release uh, or preview of Oracle 23C as well as ORDS 23.1.0 which was also recently uh, released. So now that we have it uh, started I'll just resize the screen for the virtual machine that we are now running. Now let's take a look at what we have. So we have a terminal window and a page opened up on, on the, or a file explorer, we'll say for the desktop. A lot of what we'll be doing will be in uh, the, the terminal, so we'll keep this here and see what this has to say. You'll note uh, we have all passwords are Oracle, certain URLs are available, but uh, these are also available uh, from the host machine, and we'll look at that a little bit later. To see what Java processes are running, we can use JPS. And we see that we have an orders at war, and that's process 2247. We'll use that information later to find a stop. Um, but we can also use the process list, and grep there for orders. That shows us the command line interface that was also used. So that's 2247 is our process for our Java application for the ORDS web application that's running in standalone mode. And 2217 is for our ORDS command line interface. So that's the shell script. And we're passing in a configuration directory and the serve command there. And we're saying start on port, listening on port 8080 as well. That's important information, so uh, we'll keep that for later. With this configuration uh, directory, now that we know it, uh, we can list out what the configuration settings are. Uh, this will be both global as well as pool specific configuration. Okay, now that we know our configuration, let's take a look at what else we have here in the virtual machine. In the file system, we have uh, some additional README links to SQLCL, but let's start up that browser and see what other information comes with the virtual machine image. Let's we'll see, we have a helpful little release information, gives us information about the database, the same output that we saw from the um, terminal window. We can change some settings in the browser and we also have the, again the same uh, release information. We'll keep this open because we uh, we'll keep on referring to that. So we should be able to access SQL Developer Web also known as database actions and we have a pre-built uh, or, or baked in already uh, HR schema where the password is Oracle so let's take a, a, a look to see 
what's available to us for that database account. So the key point here is that uh, we are logging in as the HR REST enabled uh, schema using the Oracle password and we're using a single page application called database application uh, database actions or SDW and that's running the, the browser is running in, inside the virtual machine we're going to get a list now of the uh, database objects primarily the, the tables first and we can see that some of those tables in fact all of them uh, are rest enabled which means that they're accessible through a rest endpoint provided by ORDS. So this is the standard uh, HR schema example set of uh, tables and, uh, and, and data. Since it's REST enabled, we can uh, interact with it in a number of different ways. Uh, we'll uh, just see what we can do about getting uh, a, that list of uh, employees. Again, all of this taking place within the virtual machine. So that generated curl command, you can just run it uh, at the command line or in a terminal window. And as we can see, it's not protected. There's no password uh, or access token required. We can uh, see the data returned in um, a, a JSON structure. But we can also access it uh, from the host machine. So this is Firefox running on my host machine and you can see that the virtual machine is running in the background. So again, we'll log in as our HR user with Oracle as our password. One of the new objects in the Converge database, 23C, is a property graph. Uh, there's also duality views and uh, other object types which others have covered. So the property graph allows you to traverse the relationships between your data. I'll provide more details on this in the description uh, along with some uh, some links. But I'm creating some tables and defining a property graph relationship between uh, people. But you'll notice that uh, currently there are errors reported for s some of that syntax. And that's primarily because the syntax isn't processed correctly through JDBC, uh, but there are ways and means around that. Well, let's explore some of those tables that we are able to create as part of our property graph definition. Since we defined a graph, uh, we can start using that uh, and query it uh, to traverse those uh, relationships. Which in, in this example is taking, say for example, uh, the, a credit score for a, a person and a person knows somebody else or works uh, at the same company and uh, to have this syntax working across JDBC we must uh, escape some of the uh, curly bracket syntax. But once we've escaped that, then uh, we should be able to run this through the REST enable SQL endpoint that, uh, that the database actions uh, ends up calling. And there is our result. So that's the uh, syntax is obviously being returned in a JSON structure and the SDW UI is re rendering that as a table. Let's have a look at uh, the location of friends of friends. Again to run this query across uh, JDBC at the moment we uh, must escape the curly brackets. So that's why there's an extra open curly bracket with a, a, a slash and a slash close curly bracket there. So we see that uh, Bob 
uh, Denise and John have friends in various different locations and uh, some of those friends are in the same uh, cities. And now that we have that query, let's see if we can define a, a handler uh, to expose that uh, through a REST interface. So let's define our module. I'll say this is our property graph module. But we'll give it a base path, say, for example. We're not too concerned about uh, protecting the endpoint, so we'll mark that as not protected. Again, this is all running within my, uh, the virtual machine. Uh, I'll be accessing it from my host machine. Now that I have a module, just define a template, and let's just say that this is our locations. And once that template is created, we'll create a handler with the query that we want to use. Open it up in a new tab to see the results. And there we have it. This browser will format the JSON response so it's easier to read. We can also add in the filter objects because this is a query based handler. And that can be quite useful. So obviously other filter object related parameters available and you can check the org documentation for those options. And let's get back to our running ords instance and look at well what happens if we stop it and can we restart it. So we find our the process that's running. Uh, the shell script is the one that calls the Java process for, for running in standalone mode. But it is that Java process 2247 which we will terminate. And let's start it again, but this time we're going to specify secure as an option. If you see there, so that means that although we're listening on port 8080, we are expecting HTTPS traffic and there is a self signed certificate generated which defaults with a common name of localhost. Now that's up and running, let's go and check to see can our browser running on our host machine accept that certificate and trust that it can send uh, traffic over HTTPS. The answer is not initially because we have to tell the browser to trust this self-signed certificate. We should only have to do that once though. So the connection is not considered secure because the certificate is not issued by a certificate authority. Uh, but the traffic is being sent over HTTPS. So let's take a look at accessing database actions or SDW again over HTTPS. So this is on port 8080 which was previously used for HTTP traffic is now being used for HTTPS and port 8080 is what is exposed from the virtual machine. Also uh, port 1521 is exposed uh, so you can access the database directly. That is the information also available here in this developer release page. This page does also mention Apex so let's take a look at that using the browser running on the host machine. So there's an internal workspace with an administrator user and password is Oracle where we can manage the workspaces and users uh, within the Apex installation. Let's take a look and see what has already come with the Oracle 
at developer dbvm. So we have a workspace already defined, but we need to sort out a, a user for accessing that workspace. Let's do that now. So we'll go and define a workspace user. We'll call them HR dev and we'll make them an administrator in this HR REST workspace. And we'll make sure that we don't require a change of password. Okay, let's try that out. We've signed out as admin, and we're going to attempt to log in to the HR REST schema with that HR dev user that we just created. Again, these are Apex users. So out of the box, this HR REST workspace in this corresponding schema is REST enabled and we can see that it has some objects already enabled as well. This is similar to the HR schema. So that's Apex running from my VM as well. Just to recap now we have a terminal window with hordes running in it. We can see that the, we get the output from that and various different uh, issues and being reported and we can stop it and start it and, and so on. As you saw that we also change some of the parameters uh, when running to. There's further information here about accessing the database. But now let's take a look at what's involved with stopping and starting the virtual image itself. So we'll go back to our virtual manager. At this point, we can just say, save the machine state. This will shut it down in the state that it currently is, so that when we restart it, it will be back to where we were with ORDs running, with uh, the port 8080 being used, but it's expecting HTTPS traffic. And just to confirm that the service is no longer running, we can just double check from our host machine. Okay, that's, we're not able to connect to that anymore. If we go back to the virtual manager, we see that that uh, has been saved and we can start it again. speed this up confirm that we, we see that well the origin instance is still running with the same output we saw before and let's just confirm that the browser can connect to it let's try that again yeah there we have it so for more information about ORGs, you can go to oracle.com slash rest for the official documentation and so on. Lots more links to more uh, in-depth features. And for a so more informal uh, ex exploration of things, ORGs and other things, you could consider taking a look at my own blog. Thank you for your time.